that God could stop them Wouldn't know what faith in God could do Through it all, through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus I've learned to trust in God Joshua chapter number two it tells us a story, maybe one that you might have heard of before. And but to get the whole gist of the story, you just about have to read several of these verses. The story is about a lady by the name of Rahab. She's a shady lady. And uh, she lives in this place called Jericho. You may have heard of that. And uh, Joshua. There's a guy by the name of Moses. He's died, and Joshua's taken over, leading the children of Israel. He's wanting to go in and take over this place called Jericho, and so Joshua sends in two spies. These two spies go in to try to figure out when they're going to attack, and they happen to stay and knock on this door, this lady of the evening, Rahab. And in verse number one, are you there? Say amen. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Chittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went, came into a harlot's house named Rahab, and lodged there. And it was told the kings of Jericho, the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in thither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thy house, for they become to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men, hid them, and said thus, There came men unto me, but I was not whence they were. In other words, she told a story. <laughs> and it came to pass about the time of the shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whether the men went, I don't know. Pursue after them quickly, for uh, ye shall overtake them. She brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them in the stalks of the flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. When you came out of Egypt... And that you did unto the two kings of the Amorites, which were on the other side of Jordan, Shion and Og, who you utterly destroyed. Now, therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. And the men answered her, uh, did you miss a verse? Okay, verse 13. And that you will save alive my father, my mother, my brethren, my sisters, and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. The men answered, our life for yours. If you utter not, this our business. In other words, don't go down to the beauty shop and start talking. <laughs> and it shall be when the Lord hath given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. And she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned, and after they uh, may go your way. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath which thou hast made us swear. Behold, 
when you come into the land, that thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which thou didst let us down by, and uh, thou shalt bring thy father, thy mother, thy brethren, all the father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood be upon his head. And we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. And if thou utter this our business, then we will be quiet of thine oath. In other words, we won't tell anybody the deal we got, which thou hast made with us to swear. And she said, according to your word, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed. And she bound the scarlet line in the window. Hallelujah. And I know you may not know where we're going, but I already know where we're going, and I'm getting excited about reading the Bible. Let's go to the Lord in word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning for allowing us to be here. I pray, Lord, that you'd help us the next few minutes get something from your word. I pray that, Lord, if... Somebody's here that don't know you like we do. I pray, Lord, they'll know you before it's everlasting too late. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. The story of Rahab the harlot. Rahab the harlot is known by her reputation. This story is a story of redemption. How somebody, God, can take a harlot out of the house of shame and put her in the hall of fame. Stay in your seat. Don't get excited. But this is what God can do with somebody like this. Rahab is a type of a sinner, a type of you and I that need salvation. Somebody said, what are you going to title this sermon? I, I thought about the harlot that was saved by the scarlet. We could call her the shady lady. I'm not for sure what you want to call her, but now the Bible calls her everything but a godly woman. She's not, uh, she's not, she doesn't say that Rahab the godly. It doesn't say Rahab the virtuous. It doesn't say Rahab the, the prayer warrior. It doesn't say Rahab, uh, you know, the churchgoer. It says Rahab the harlot. Can I say this? Rahab is in a mess. Now, if you don't know what a harlot is, you go up and look it up. Well, don't do that either. (laughs) But this is a lady that earned her living by selling herself, and she's in a mess. She is literally in a mess. She lived in Jericho in the city that was under the judgment of God. I mean, God's fixing to burn the whole place down. And not only where she lived, but how she lived. Rahab, Rahab the harlot. She was the talk of the town. Immoral, indecent. She ran this house of ill repute, if you would. But before we put on our pharisaical glasses... And before we look down our nose on Rahab, let's just remember something. Rahab didn't wake up in the morning and say, this is what I want to do for a living. I don't know of an alcoholic that woke up when he was was a kid and say, that's what I want to be when I grow up. She as a little girl didn't wake up and say, this is what I want to do with my life when when I grow up. Everybody in this room, I think the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So before we run old Rahab down, we need to look in the mirror because we were in the same situation. Maybe not in the same business, but we was going headed to the same place she's headed. Before we met the Lord. So she's in a mess in her condition, her corruption, her condemnation. And this is the way it was. Jericho's about to burn down. Rahab's harlot was going to, uh, Rahab's house was going to fall. And she and everybody she knew and everybody she lived around. Her problem wasn't a legal problem. So God didn't send her a lawyer. Her problem wasn't physical. So God didn't send her a doctor. 
Her problem wasn't financial, so God didn't send her a banker. Her problem was sin. And so God sent a Savior. When you have a sin problem, you need a Savior to come rescue you out of your position. But how many of you know she is in a mess? She's in a literal mess. But how many of you know you can't have a miracle until it starts with a mess? You can't get to a miracle unless you start with a mess. Somebody ought to be saying amen on that. It takes a mess to make a miracle. And everybody, whether you can relate to her or not, whether you, listen, we've all been in a mess and we may be in a mess this morning. You might be in a mess tomorrow. Let me just say this. If the devil could have his way with everybody in this room, we'd all be in a mess. If the devil could have his way with Rahab, if the devil could have his way with you and your kids and your family and your life and your city, he would destroy every living inch of it. Until a miracle comes and Knocks on the door. Joshua says, we got to take this city over. He sends in two spies. I don't know who they are. Well, I got a good idea, but he sends these spies in and they go in and they go to her house because nobody's probably going to look for them there. And they go to her house, knock on the door, say, hey, can you let us in? Can we hide out right here? She says, sure. Well, the king of Jericho finds out there's two spies in the land. You call Rahab, says, hey, Rahab, you turn over them spies. They're here to destroy us. And she hides them upstairs and then tells the, the soldier, says, hey, I don't know where they went. They left out of here running. They went down the street. I ain't got a clue where they went. And she had them hid all along upstairs. And then she tells them, she tells them men, them two spies from the nation of Israel, she says, I've heard about your God. Jericho, uh, Tommy, Jericho is a long way from the Red Sea. They didn't have television. They didn't have Fox News. They didn't have internet. They didn't have uh, all of those telegram and telephones and all of that. Somehow she heard. She said, I heard about what your God did to the children of uh, well, the, the, the Pharaoh, or the uh, Pharaoh's army. I've heard he dried up the Red Sea. Words done got around that he is the God of Israel. She said, I'm fixing to hide y'all out. But if I do, I want you to remember me when y'all come to destroy this whole place. I want y'all to remember me and my family. I want y'all to remember me and my family. And those two spies said, I'll tell you what, we'll make a deal with you. You let us out. So she lived on, there's a picture up there about uh, uh, them letting them down on the side of the wall. She lived on the outside of the city, sort of like this. And she let them down by a scarlet rope. And she let them spies down so they could escape. And, she, and there was, they told her, said, hey, Rahab, leave that scarlet rope hanging out the window. And we're going to tell all the army when we come to destroy this place, leave that house untouched. Go tell your mama, go tell your daddy, go tell your sister and all your brethren, get in that house. This sort of sounds familiar to me. Because he told Moses, remember, lamp, put the blood on the doorpost. And when I come through, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Well, now in Rahab, they said, hey, that scarlet rope out the window. And when we come through, judgment's coming. And everybody's in your house, protected by the, protected under the scarlet rope, will be protected. She said, you got a deal. Hallelujah. She's in a mess. But she witnesses a miracle. And this miracle, it starts out as conviction. Oh, I remember when I was in conviction. I was raised up Trinity Baptist Church right over there by Heck of Thorn. 
a little small uh, country church. And man, I remember sitting on them pews and sitting beside mama, second row, pee on the side. Daddy's up there preaching. And, uh, you know, in, as most kids do, you cut up and you, you know, you lay in the floor and y'all, and at some point or another, when kid gets uh, old enough to where you need to make them sit in the seat and listen and all of that, because faith comes by hearing, hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so mama then finally made me start sitting beside her. And then when I started getting fidgety and wanting to go to the bathroom every 10 minutes, <laughs> trying to get out from the preaching of the, you know, just don't like the preaching. I had to get out. And boy, she would take her index finger and her thumb and she'd take a plug out of my leg. <laughs> How many of y'all been there before? I'm telling you, I mean, she would really get after it. And then she would do this. She'd say, don't you, don't you say nothing. Don't. And I'm sitting there, let go of my leg. I'm fixing a holler and scream. She said, don't you say, don't you say nothing. Daddy's up there preaching, though. Know, he's seeing everything's going on. And boy, I'm telling you what, he would do like that. Never looked that way. He would just do like that. And it sounded like that snap was on a microphone, man. It'd go, and I like, boy, we fix how revival when we get home. Man, I'm telling you. And uh, I'd even come to the altar. I, I'd, tell you, I'd come to the altar. And I, I'd make sure Daddy saw me at the altar. <laughs> I'd look up. And he'd, he'd, re, he'd kneel down right by his whisper in my ear. And he'd say, you may be getting right with God, but me and you first get right when we get home. I remember Sunday school teachers like Miss Judy, and you've heard all the funny stories I could tell about that, and uh, her mother, Miss Kirby, and then uh, um, um, uh, Miss Wilma Hicks. Miss Wilma Hicks, may, I'm talking about, made us learn those verses, uh, Romans 5, 12, one of the first verses I ever learned. Wherefore, one man, sin in the world, death by sin, death passed upon all men, for all have sin. That was 40 years ago, and I still embedded in my heart is what she uh, uh, made us learn and instilled that word in us. And eventually, sitting on that pew, I began to get under conviction and remember what I heard. And then it went from my hearing down to the heart. A lot of people hear, but it never gets down to the heart. Well, Rahab here, when Rahab, she said, as soon as we heard these things, our hearts didn't melt. As soon as we heard these things, it got down into our hearts and we believe your God. Rahab is a Gentile. Rahab is a woman of ill repute. Rahab is a, on the, outs, the outside of the covenant of the promises of Israel. But she said, I've heard what your God can do, and I want to be a part of that. And then this, you know, people say, I want to see a miracle. Boy, I want to see a miracle. Oh, I want to see. And I know what they say. I know you turn on TV, and somebody's got a healing line, and they got a miracle line. Look, I'm not making fun, but look, everybody wants to see a miracle. They want to see somebody's leg, you know, that's longer than another, and then it goes like this. And they want to see something they can see. But let me tell you, the best miracle in the Bible is when God takes a black heart, washes it in red blood, makes it whiter than snow. That, my friend, is the best miracle in the world. Somebody asked a preacher one time, and he says, I want to see a miracle. And that preacher pointed over there to an old drunk that uh, used to be a drunk, and he got saved. He said, there's one right there. He said, what was wrong with him? What was his leg? What was, what was, what, what was his deformity? He said, well, nothing wrong with him. He used to be a drunk. God saved him. And now he switched fountains. He don't drink from the same fountain no more. That's a miracle. He said, you got another one. I said, his son sitting right beside him. Raised up. His son used to, his daddy used to come home at drunk and whoop his, whoop his boy and abuse him. And now he's, got a brand, <laughs> now he's got a brand new daddy. Because that's what God can do with a mess. He can turn it into a miracle. We have Rahab, Rahab, uh, Rahab, the harlot. Oh, but then she's a mess. She's a miracle, but she's got a message. She's got a message that she wants to tell, and that message is this. 
And verse number, oh, let's see, verse number 12. Now, therefore, I pray you swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. A token. I ain't got time to preach all this, but a token. God gave Noah a token. He said, I'll never flood this earth with water again. And he put the rainbow, and he said, let it be a token. Of our covenant. God made Moses a token, a covenant. The blood on the doorpost, on the side post. When I come through the land, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. That's a token. He gives us a token here, Rahab. Rahab says, I want a token. I want something I can hang on to. And they said, you put this scarlet rope out your window, and I'm telling you what, it'll protect your house and everybody that's in it. Amen. That's your token. You say, Brother Jeremy, what's our token? Well, I can tell you right now, our token, <laughs> the token that we cling to, the token that we hang on to is the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That cord, that line, bloodline red, all the way through the Old Testament, all the way through to the book of the Revelation, it's by the blood, it's always been by the blood, always will be by the blood. What can wash away our, I'm about to join my own preacher. What can wash away our sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Rahab had two sermons. She was a mess. She met a miracle. Now she's got a message. Her message is twofold. The first message is this. Get in while you can Get in while you can. Did you know those spies left uh, Rahab's house? They didn't tell her, we're coming on this particular day at this particular time, and we're destroying this city. They didn't tell her when. She don't know when. She don't know when judgment's coming. And neither do you. Rahab, it could have been with an hour. It could have been six weeks. It could have been tomorrow. It could have been in two weeks. It could have been on the, uh, the next Friday, whatever it was. She didn't know. All she knew was to go to mama and go to daddy, go to sister, go to aunt, go to uncle and say, look here, I know I've got a bad reputation in town. I'm a mess, but I'm just here to tell you I met a miracle and I got a message for you. I want my family inside my house because on the outside is going to be a destruction, but on the inside is going to be some deliverance. I need you to get in while we can. I don't know when the city's going to be destroyed. I just want you to get in the house. We don't know when judgment's coming. And it is our job to tell our family, get in while you can. Get in while you can. She didn't know when it's coming. Daddy, I want you to be saved. Mama, I want you to be saved. Sister, I want you to be saved. I want you to get in under the scarlet rope. The cord that's hanging out the window is a picture and a type of the Lord Jesus Christ when he's coming. I don't know when judgment's coming, but I'm just here to tell you I need you to get in while you can. From the house of shame to the hall of fame. Now, Rahab was still considered an old Gentile dog because she was born on the outside of the covenant. Oh, get this right here. But she went to a wedding, and it was hers. And she married old Gen a, Jew a Jewish boy probably one of those spies. They had a son by the name of Boaz. Boaz met a lady by the name of Ruth and they had a boy by the name of Obed. Obed had a, him and his wife got together and had a son and his name was Jesse. Jesse and his wife got together and had a son named David. You may not have ever heard of him before, but he was king of Israel. In the genealogy of Jesus Christ, and Rahab got into it by marriage. 
Oh, Lord of mercy. I'm about to enjoy my own preaching. Oh, you say, preacher, that ain't in the Bible. Matthew 1, 5. You ready? Yes, it is. And Salmon. Now, Salmon was probably, I'm going to take a wild guess. Salmon was probably one of the spies. Right. Don't know. Second Chronicles gives us a little insight on that. I ain't got time to deal with that this morning. But Salmon, and Salmon beget Boaz of? And Boaz beget Obed of? And Obed beget Jesse. And guess who? Jesse begat King David. So that makes Rahab the great, great grandmother of David. And she got in. Now, oh, y'all ready? Stay in your seat. Stay, please, do not shout on this one. <laughs> Russ is already shouting. Okay, Russ, ready? Watch this one. Everything we read in Joshua chapter 2. Y'all ready? Rahab the? All through the Bible, Rahab the? Harlot. In Matthew 1, 5, her past is gone. Just says Rahab. Let me get to the Pentecostal side. Tommy? You got to help me a little better. Her past is gone. Yes. Old Testament, it was Rahab the. Well, when she met Jesus, her past is gone, and it's just Rahab, who's now in the genealogy of Jesus. <laughs> well, I ain't got time to tell you all this right here. I ain't got time to tell you all this. But she went to a wedding after Jericho was destroyed. She's a Gentile, married a Jew. And she went to a wedding after the city was destroyed. Y'all fish and get it. We're headed to a wedding because <laughs> we're married to a and we're heading to a wedding after this whole place goes up in smoke. That's right, that's right. Hallelujah. All right. Now, Sammy's coming to the piano. And I'm going to tell you this. Oh, I didn't tell you Rahab's second. Come on, Sammy. I didn't tell you Rahab's second message. I got so excited telling you that. I forgot. Her first message is get in while you can. Her second message is this. If God can save me. He can save anybody. <laughs> First message, get in while you can. Get in the house that's covered by the blood. Number two, if God can save me, he can save anybody. I finished to tell you this. Under President Abraham Lincoln, they were in the Civil War, and uh, there was a husband and wife their two boys was all fighting in the war. And the, and the mama of the two boys was on her deathbed. She told her husband, she said, it's a true story, it's found in history book. Told her husband, said, I sure wish my, I could see my boys before I die. Oh, sure wish I could see my boys before I die. So the husband had a bright idea. I don't know if this will work. I don't know if this will work, but I'll, I'll go see the president. I'll go see Abraham Lincoln and see if he'll let them boys come home long enough to see their mama before she dies. He made a long trip, a long journey. Many, many days traveling, traveling. He gets there to where Abraham Lincoln is supposed to be, and he walks up to the big old, big old iron doors. He knocks on those doors. Soldiers come to the door, and he says, I, I need to see the president. They said, you got an appointment? I said, no, I don't have an appointment. I, he tells them the whole story about his wife on the deathbed, and there's boys that are out fighting the war. And, and boy, y'all got to understand. Please understand. I just need to talk to him just for a few minutes. They sort of laughed it off and shrugged their shoulders and said, sir, you don't understand how busy he is. If you don't have an appointment, you just can't just walk in there and see him. 
And they closed the doors on that man's face. That man knew probably, he said, I knew that was probably going to happen. He went down the street, just a little piece, found him an old park bench. He sat down there and began to weep and cry. What am I going to tell my wife? Her boys are not going to get home before she dies. He begins to weep. There's a little boy, a little boy out there kicking a tin can like they do and run up on that old fellow and saw him crying. He sat down beside him and said, Mr., what well, seems to be the trouble? He told him the whole story about his, about his wife and the two boys all fighting the war. He said, I tried to go see Abraham Lincoln and they wouldn't let me in. He said, Mr., come on, go with me. They was headed back to those same doors. He said, son, I've already tried this. That ain't going to work. I've already tried that. The little boy just kept leading him by the hand. The little boy went up to them doors. Big old doors swung wide open. But this time, them soldiers looked at that boy and just stepped out of his way. He walked on down the long corridor, marble floors, two or three hallways. Here he goes. He knew where he thought he knew where he was. looked like he knew where he was going. Walked up to a big old office door. Didn't even knock. Opened the door, walked on in. Abraham Lincoln is sitting behind the desk. This man's about to have a heart attack. He says, we're fixing to die any minute. Until that boy says, Daddy! Amen. This man's got a problem. And he believes you can help him. Amen. Amen. Daddy, this man's got a problem. And he believes you can help him. He told Abraham Lincoln his problem. He sent those boys home to see his mama before, they pa before she passed away. It's a true story. But it's all who you know. And it's all who knows him. I get to thinking about myself. Look at me, Tommy. Look at me. Heaven's door. <laughs> they just laugh. <laughs> I guarantee you can't get in here. Just hung my head in shame. Sitting on a pew, Trinity Baptist Church, 10-year-old boy. Jesus come back down by my side and sat beside me. He said, what seems to be the trouble? I told him my trouble. He said, follow me. I said, mister, I've already tried this. It don't work. They're not laughing this time. Jesus comes on in. Daddy! <laughs> this fellow seems to think you can help him. I'm going in with him. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Rahab's in a mess. But God sent her a miracle. It turned her into a message. And she's got a message for you today. Get in while you can. And if God can save her, he can save anybody. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, this morning. For teaching us about Rahab. Lord, glad I'm saved. Thankful I'm saved. Now, Lord, I pray. I don't know who's saved and who ain't. 